Welcome back, everyone. I've missed you. I know it's been kind of a minute since my last post. However, I'm glad to see you. And today, we're going to be talking about Ghanaian food and drink. And I'm going to tell you what were some of my favorite meals in Ghana. So stay tuned. Okay, so welcome back everyone. Um, I mean, as you can probably see, the weather's changing, and so I have to put on my little long sleeve, get ready for fall time, because unlike in Ghana, there are actual like changes in the weather here, and so I'm really missing Ghana at this point, and definitely hoping to go back in December and looking for sponsorships for that. <laughs> Just joking, kind of not really. Um, so today we're going to talk about some of my, some of the food in Ghana and let me just start off by saying I love Ghanaian food. I love Ghana and my experience there and I definitely love Ghanaian food. Now I will say that I was in Accra. We went to Ho Kofodidwa. From there we went to Tamale. We passed by Mole National Park. And then we came back down and went to Cape Coast and then, and uh, Cape Coast slash Almina, and then we came back to Accra. And so um, the food, number one, is just a lot more fresh. And there's two different parts to it. Some of the locals said that it was because they couldn't afford pesticides to be able to grow, you know, at a mass level. So I was kind of like, yeah, because it's super good and super fresh. One thing that I saw was that there was goat everywhere everywhere which i was totally fine with because i'll be like hey little baby you getting ready for lunch today okay you stretch it out so you can be real nice and limber for my lunch okay so, yeah um but overall um my experience with Ghanaian food was one that it was super fresh that it was super the meat was super tender and also, it wasn't just goat meat. You had um, your share of goat was definitely everywhere. You could have um, some chicken. I would say a little bit less common. There was a lot of fish. Um, not so much pork, really, in a lot of places that we went. Maybe that's because of the religious um, kind of harmony and tolerance that they have. Um, you know, in Islam, you can't eat pork, and so maybe that. Um, beef, there was some, but I didn't really see a lot. And so there was a lot of different options for meat, which I really appreciated. I'm mostly pescatarian until I got to Ghana. Then I was like, go to Tyrian. And that was just that. I mean, I'm talking like goat stew. We had goat skewers. Those were amazing. They had a little, um, sauce. Oh, I don't know. Someone let me know. Tell me in the comments. Do you know what that sauce was? It was like the seasoning sauce. That was amazing. I wish I knew how to cook it with it. Um, and so it was just super good, super fresh, super tender. I trusted the meat, you know, I just saw it walking around over there. So I knew what it had been doing. And so, yeah, that was that. It was amazing. I can't. I will say that a number of our colleagues on the trip who were vegan or vegetarian had a little bit more of a challenging time because, um, you know, there was a lot of flavoring that, that uh, would have ground and smoked meat. And so, for instance, shito, which I love to, I just have everything about it, but shito would be like a black peppery kind of like um, seasoning, I guess. And that had dried meat in it, and I didn't tell my vegan or vegetarian friends when I found that out, because why? You know, just let them enjoy up to this point. Um, so for those of you who do identify as vegan or vegetarian or would like some non-meat options, then um, it might be a little bit more challenging, but I will say that on Accra, there were a couple of different places that we went to. Pat's at El Walk, we went to Asasa Pe or Asasa P. Um, in Accra and some of the other places that were smaller, definitely more difficult. 
Um, in Cape Coast and Almina, I would say that was probably the place where a number of our vegan and vegetarian friends had the most opportunities. There was a number of expats there from mostly like European countries, basically. Um, I'm not going to say that much more about that, but they had a lot of other, you know, alternative types of food. Getting back to what I love the most, let me just tell you, everybody, you know, Mete Chui Kakra. Oh, how do you say? It? I speak a little bit of tree, Mete Chui Kakra. So, my favorite thing would be in Katikwaini Aponche. Um, that means ground nut stew with fufu and goat. Hands down, my favorite. Hands down, my favorite. Um, my favorite places to go would be the chop bars. Hands down also. Um, chop bars being like kind of the local places where uh, many of the local Ghanaians would eat instead of the restaurants that we would go to, which tended to be a lot more expensive, took hella long. And when I say hella long, I mean from the time that you walked in to the time that you got your food after you ordered and got your food could be anywhere from 30, 40, or beyond minutes. And at a certain point, I couldn't really blame them because... I mean, I guess it was just that fresh. I don't know. Maybe they went and killed the goat outside or I don't know. But when we went to a chop bar, oh, yeah. And then it would be anywhere between like 40 to like 100 CDs, which it's like basically five and a half um, CDs to one dollar. So you can do the math, like maybe 10 or more dollars. But at a chop bar, at the chop bar, you would go up. And you would just see a whole arrangement of food that had been cooking all day from grandmas, aunties, and cousins, which I trust a lot more. And you could have, for instance, a four-person meal with beer or origin, which was also my favorite, for maybe 80 CDs. That's between four people. And so I love the chop bar. I love the Nkatikwaini Aponche. We learned how to eat it in the correct way. And then we learned how to cook it because in the Bay Area, there's not a lot of places where you can get fresh and tasty Ghanaian food. So look at this little clip for how we did that and how we were able to enjoy our food here because we missed it so much. Hello, everybody. Maha, uh -huh. this is Acacia and Darnisha. Hello. And so today we're finally getting to making some groundnut soup. So I'll show you the process. First, you start off with this book, which I mean, I think it could have been any, but we want to make groundnut soup. So here's some of the ingredients. Here's some of the process. We're finally getting to it. So I've started already with some peanut butter, some Nigerian peanut butter. Some tomato paste, which I know, I don't, well, yeah. And some cayenne pepper. We're going to put in some okra. Maybe beans later. There's some palm oil. Fufu mix, which I know, I know, I know. But I just, I don't have a human-sized mortar and pickle or whatever you call it. And I'm not about to spend no 18 hours making one meal. Okay? So, maybe in the future. We do have this. We do have a... Not a human size one, but it would take us a long time, I think, if we were food food with this. Yeah, <laughs> so we're about to do that today. So we got the fufu mix, and what else? I think that's some, and I think it's happening. <laughs> okay, so here we got this on the stove with a little bit of water and then um, my aunt luckily had already just slaughtered a goat recently so she gave me some okay so i missed a couple of steps like a number of steps Oof. but um this is what it looks like now i'm so excited so i put more water in there about six more cups I put the meat, which was already oops, here it is. meat, about to be amazing. I put some okra, just as much as I wanted. 
and about one fourth a cup of <clears throat> onion, about a tablespoon of ginger, <laughs> and I'm gonna let it sit and boil for about 30 minutes. Put this on here. And then also for flavor, I'm putting about a tablespoon of ground fish. So I'm gonna let it go for about 30 minutes and she looks amazing. It's boiling for at least another like 10, 15 minutes. So by the time that's done, then the fufu should be done. And then I will put two cups of fufu mix. So we'll see what's gonna happen. I'm super juiced because look at what the it's looking like. Stirring. Exercise. You're doing good. I feel like uh, I need to get some gym points for this part. Avoided. Now, of course, I told you a little bit about drinks. Origin is basically a bitters beer that um, they said was supposed to be really good for men's virility, but just in general anyway. It has a lot of tiger nut and a lot of other um, really strong type of herbal medicines. I'm just going to tell you hands down my favorite is pokeke. 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 This is hands down my favorite. If any of you in the World Wide Web are going to be going to Ghana anytime soon, please let me know, DM me, and please get me some pokeke, y'all. Like, this is my last bottle. My friend sent it to me from there. I had six bottles. There was only a couple left, and I don't know what I'm going to do without it. This is by far my favorite. So you can see it's atajwe and ginger liquor. And so it is, I don't know if you can see right there. Oh, it's backwards and upside down. So it's made of tiger nut, ginger, negro pepper. I think that means black pepper. And um, grainies of paradise, grains of paradise. I'm not really sure what that is, but either way, let me just tell you and take my word for it. This stuff is amazing. This helps me when I was about to get sick, I would have some. When my stomach was hurting, I would have some. When I was feeling sad, I would have some. Like when I was feeling hot, I would have some. When I was feeling lonely, I would have some. When we were on a trip too long, I would have some. When I was walking up the street, I would have some. This is like my best friend. I don't know what else to say. It's just amazing. Um, so tell me about what your favorite meal is. What do you, What's your favorite Ghanaian cuisine? Uh, what's the thing that you have every day or the thing that you just can't live without? You have to learn how to cook it. Let us know. Definitely like and subscribe in the comments. And share some of the recipes too. I'm still trying to learn how to make some of those donuts that the hawkers would have. Because those things were amazing. I really miss the tiger nut milk. Um, but I could kind of do without that. I miss the fruits, juices that they would make that we got at Pat's at El Walk. That was some of the best drinks, green drinks that I had. Um, also, maybe some of the thing that got me a little bit sick from, but either way, I would do it again. Um, so let us know, what was your favorite? What do you like? How do you make it? Where do you find the places? For instance, if you don't have the natural ingredients here, where do you find them? Because I need to know, because I need to re-up on some Ghanaian food. Um, definitely stay tuned for more posts on where we would find pokeke, where we would drink pokeke, where we went out, and different forms of nightlife in Accra and beyond. So thank you for tuning in, and see you next time.